What's up everybody? Thomas Kennedy here again from Dark Theory Tattoo. Tattoos by Thomas. Instagram at Thomas Kennedy Art. All that good stuff. Back again with another airbrush lesson for you if you're trying to learn how to airbrush. Uh, in the last video I showed you how to do dots and lines and what kind of airbrush you need. And so this time I'm going to get into how to airbrush a basic t-shirt design with like a little beach scene, ocean scene, or something like that with some cool colors. If you haven't practiced the dots and the lines at least a few hundred times each, then you're not going to have enough, you're not going to have the trigger down enough to do what we're going to do in this video. So I highly recommend you practice the dots and lines over and over and over until you can do those with ease. Then you're ready to jump up to this. Uh, with that being said, I'm going to head back to the airbrush room and show you what kind of colors you'll need for this and get started. All right, I got my t-shirt set up on and stretched out on the shirt board. Now, I choose to use, this is what's called, the brand of this shirt is a next level. They're really soft, they fit good, they're comfortable, they're a good quality t-shirt, I recommend those. They're more expensive, but the more comfortable your shirt is, the more your customer's gonna wear it and show off your work, the more business you'll get. But if you choose to buy one or two dollar t-shirts that don't fit that good, you know, that's up to you. This is what I prefer, so that's what we're going to go with today. And as far as shirt boards, you can get these. Just do a Google search for airbrush t-shirt boards. Um, they're really handy. And they come in all different sizes for all the shirts you'll need. So for this painting, we're going to do like a little ocean scene with a sky. We're going to be using opaque black, opaque white, opaque blue, transparent bright yellow, fluorescent violet, fluorescent raspberry, Caribbean blue, and deep red. And like I said, if you haven't practiced your dots and your lines, all this stuff, and just practiced thin and thick lines and gotten the hang of that, then you're not ready for this lesson. But if you have done what you're supposed to do, then you're good to go and you're going to bust out a cool t-shirt. All right, so I think I'm going to start with some of this Caribbean blue. Now with this thicker Createx t-shirt paint, you might have to run the pressure a little higher than 35, depending on what kind of airbrush you use. And that's perfectly fine because the shirt absorbs the paint, so you're not going to get runs and spiders and stuff like that, like you would on a slick surface. So, they are a little bit easier to paint than other surfaces. Alright, I'm going to start off by just kind of doing like a, a circular kind of shape, just to kind of figure out how to, you know, how to center my design. And kind of like a rule of thumb, you want your design to be three to four, maybe even five inches from the neck. That way the design's not like way up here on. So I'm gonna start off and just do a nice little circle, oval, something like that. 
just to kind of get it started. And that looks pretty well centered. So then I'm going to start off by kind of freehanding a, a sky. Now this is just doing kind of how we did the lines in the first video, kind of more just wider and not letting as much paint out, keeping it kind of soft and fuzzy looking. And then you can go darker. You can build it up as you go. You don't want to go too dark starting out. If you start out light and you mess up slightly, you can go in there and tighten it up as you build the design up. So that's what I recommend doing. Now I've got the blue down to the sky. Put some blue down at the bottom too for the water that we're going to do. And now I'm going to do some bolder lines kind of just doing like thin to thick going out that way or you can start here and taper it off might just do it that way then do some shadow lines under those maybe you can go back and thicken them up a little bit there's plenty of samples of this kind of work on Google you can search for it and just use those as reference until you get the hang of it and then as long as you have a good understanding of what colors go well together you can just start building designing some custom designs out of your imagination and just see what you can come up with but until then I recommend just going off of Google images find a shirt that you like that you want to try to learn how they did it and pr practice this one over and over you can do this same design with different colors but practice this one several times until you get the hang of it All right, got a nice design started. It's pretty well centered in the shirt. Time to move on to another color. All right, now I'm going to the opaque blue, which is a darker blue. So I'm gonna go in here and start kind of building on top of this lighter Caribbean blue. Start kind of building in some detail. I'm going to go in and do some more of these lines in the sky. Make them stand out a little bit more. There's where my horizon line will be. Go ahead and get that in there. I'm gonna do some really thin lines right here. This will be the water. I'm going to darken up this outside area. And when you're painting on a shirt or any other surface, you want to always keep your airbrush perpendicular to your surface. You don't want to tilt this way or any way because you're going to get overspray. And 
you're going to have a little bit either way, but if you angle it, your, your lines won't be as crisp and it's going to look way fuzzier. So you want to keep your airbrush pointing straight at the target. So don't do this. Move with it like this. Now, I think I'll darken this up down here. Straighten up my horizon a little bit. I think I'll add a couple of clouds up here in the sky. Happy little clouds, like old Bob Ross always said. Happy little clouds. Happy little clouds. And if you want me to do a video just for Painting little clouds, I can do that. Just comment, leave a comment at the bottom of the video, and I can do it. Everybody does these clouds in their own way. There's a lot of different ways to do them. So don't think you have to do them just like me or any other artist. Find a way that works for you, that you like the end result, and run with it. As long as you like it and the customer likes it, that's the main thing. Now notice on some of these lines I'm getting close and some of them I'm staying back farther. It just depends on if you want it to be a, a nice crisp bold line or if you want it to have that nice gradient look to it. Kind of more of a fuzzy line. Let's see. I'm going to go ahead and darken this up a little bit more. And make sure you step away from your design once in a while and kind of see how it's looking. If you're up on it close up all the time, you might not notice certain things. to the next color. All right, now I have my airbrush loaded with some fluorescent violet. I'll probably only do a little bit with this color, then do some, a little bit more detail with a deep 
opaque purple. Just throw some over here, maybe over here. Maybe have a little bit going over here. Give these little happy little clouds some color. A little bit of purple up in there. Maybe throw some over in there. Just do what you think looks good. Don't look too bad. Call that good on the violet. All right, now I have opaque purple loaded in the airbrush. It's a darker purple. Now, if you're using a, an airbrush like me, Gravity Feed, and you're only using one airbrush, which I'm I'm doing using only this one right now. I have several, but if I'm not in a rush and I'm just kind of taking my time painting a shirt I will just use one airbrush and just clean it out as I go now if you're going from a light purple to a dark purple or light blue to dark blue or anything like that you don't have to necessarily clean the airbrush out in between but then once you're going to go to a different color or a lighter color then you'll need to stop and run some uh, reducer or water through your airbrush and clean it out and I can do another video for how to clean your airbrush out correctly if you need me to. Just comment. Um, if you're using a siphon feed airbrush, then you can just use individual different bottles and have a different color in each bottle and have one bottle dedicated just to water or reducer. And you can run that through your airbrush in between colors to clean it out and then just stick another bottle on there with a different color. Or if you have the money to get the full setup, I recommend just getting a different airbrush for every color you're gonna be using. Then you can just pick up a different airbrush and run with it. And if you have the quick connects, then you only need one hose. Just disconnect, connect, and go. But like I said, I'm just taking my time on this one. I'm not in a hurry, so I'm just using one airbrush and cleaning it out as I go, as I need to. All right, now for some dark opaque purple. And I'm just gonna probably do a little bit of cloud detail or something with this. Nothing too crazy. Maybe add a couple extra little clouds in there. Uh, maybe bring, add a little bit for this. Add some more little purple lines with the blue kind of fading in towards the middle. And I'm going to leave this area kind of light. And that will probably be like my light source. And then we'll do some cool highlights coming down across the water here in a little bit. But first, some more happy little clouds. Happy little clouds. Happy little clouds. If you don't know who Bob Ross is, look up Bob Ross. Anybody that does any kind of art 
should know who Bob Ross is. He was probably a cool dude. And he was an awesome artist. And he liked painting happy little trees and fluffy little clouds. And it wouldn't hurt to buy some of his videos and take notes from him. He did oil paintings on canvases and he could bust one out in like an hour and it would look awesome. But some of the same kind of techniques that he uses in there as far as using atmospheric perspective and just how he layers his stuff can come in handy for airbrushing too. So I recommend looking him up and taking some notes. And start painting some happy little trees and fluffy little clouds. It'll make you happy. Really happy. All right, let me step away and see what we got. Not too shabby so far. Let's see. All right, how about I darken it up here and here? on to the next color. All right, I cleaned my airbrush out and now I have it loaded with some fluorescent raspberry. And since I've been using blues and purples, this will bring a little bit of warmth to it because this is a warm color. Um, those are cool colors. If you don't know what warm colors and cool colors are, then I recommend pausing the video and doing some Google searches on warm and cool colors, color theory, and maybe even go buy a color wheel. Color wheels are handy. I have I keep a couple here in my shop. Um, they kind of let you know what colors go well together and why. So. I'm going to throw some electric raspberry, or not electric, but fluorescent raspberry. I'm thinking about tattoo ink. Throw some of this in here. Your warm colors are like red, orange, yellow. Cool colors would be blue, purple, green. And once you get real technical, there are warmer purples and cooler purples and you know chromas and values and all that cool stuff it's good to know all that and the more you know about that stuff and the more you utilize it in your paintings the better they'll be but right now i'm just keeping things kind of basic on this shirt most airbrush t-shirts you want to keep kind of simple because you more than likely if you do it for a business a lot of times you're in a busy setting and you are kind of pushed for time but if you're going to do it just kind of as a side hustle and do like i am right now have a setup in the back or in your room or garage or something you can take all the time you want on each shirt and go all out on them if you want to um, but keep in mind how much time are you willing to put into that shirt and how much is somebody willing to pay you for that shirt so keep all that in mind and i will do another video in the future um, when i actually have my airbrush tent set up and i'll probably go over some pricing and a little bit more of the actual business part of it if you 
are interested in setting up an airbrush booth or working at someone else's airbrush booth, it would be good to learn some of that stuff. So, some fluorescent raspberry. That warmed it up a little bit. Makes it look kind of cool. All right, now I think I'm gonna skip the deep red. I was gonna put some deep red in it, but I don't think I need that. So, on to the next color. All right, now clean my airbrush out again, and now I have it loaded with transparent bright yellow. And if you're wondering why some of the paint is called transparent, some of it's called opaque. Those are terms you need to know as well. For example, opaque purple, transparent yellow. What that means is opaque is non-transparent. It's It will cover the surface pretty well. Transparent allows whatever you're putting it on top of to show through a little bit. So you have to keep that in mind when, when layering certain colors. For example, I'm gonna put the transparent bright yellow. I'm gonna let it overlap some of this and it'll actually, it's not gonna cover any of the other colors. Now here in the white area, it'll look pretty bright and it's gonna kind of blend well with these blues and purples. And now I could probably use an opaque yellow and it would be all right, but the transparent bright yellow will work better. And whenever I get to the black, it's gonna go on top of everything else. So being opaque black will work out really well because it's gonna cover whatever I put it over. And transparent black would probably be pretty close on a shirt. You might not notice much difference but the opaque black will definitely just lay down nice and solid on top of everything really well. So it's good to keep that in mind when you're picking out your paints. Um, a lot of the colors are transparent and they work well for certain things. And then there's the fluorescent. Now that's probably just somewhere in between. Fluorescent just means like really bright, like neon. And that's probably more on the more on the opaque side, but see how this yellow lays in here. And if you're doing like me and cleaning out your airbrush in between colors, make sure you clean it out really well. Fill the bowl up with some water and then just run it through there like you would run your paint through there. And then there's a technique called reaming it out. Slide your needle back and forth to make sure the needle is cleaned off. You can pull the needle out and clean it off good in between if you need to. And you should, I can make a video for cleaning it out too, but once, when you first get your airbrush, you want to look at the instructions and learn how to take it apart, put it back together, learn the parts because you'll need to take it apart once in a while. If you're doing a lot of painting, you need to take it apart, clean it thoroughly, and you have to be able to do that without damaging it. So definitely learn that before you even get started. Something you have to know. You gotta be able to take it apart, put it together, and be able to work on it when something's not working correctly. And like I said in the first video, you will need to clean the tip of that needle off once in a while, especially if you're dealing with thicker paints. So I'm gonna run this yellow Focus it right there in the middle and then run it down here like the sun would be shining. See how that looks. And once again, yellow is a warm color. So it's definitely brightening it up a little bit. And it's blending well with the blues and purples. Just to brighten it up just a little bit, maybe. Alright, that's good on the yellow. Oh, 
All right, now I'm about to lay down some black. I'm gonna do a couple of palm trees and like some of the weeds that just stick up, kind of like turn into the beach scene. Now doing the palm trees is basically nothing but doing a bunch of lines. Tapering your lines from thick to thin and whipping them out. So if you haven't practiced the lines from the first video, then you're not gonna be able to do a very good palm tree. Your palm trees gonna look jacked up. But if you did practice, then you're good. All right, now once again, opaque black, it's gonna lay down really well on top of everything. Now this will be, you can start out light if you need to. Some people can just go in there and lay down everything perfect first try. Me, sometimes I like to just start slow and build it up. So, this will be kind of like the ground where the tree will stand, the happy little palm tree, Bob Ross style. See what that looks like from a distance. All right, as you can see, I started out light, kind of holding my airbrush farther away. And then to get these lines, I went in closer, made them bolder. Got to be practicing those lines. Fade that out a little bit more. All right, now for the trunks of the trees. All right, and if you need to, you can kind of make a motion of kind of plan out where you want it. I'm gonna do like a smaller tree here and a bigger tree there. So, that looks good, starting out thicker, getting thinner as it goes up. Same with that one. Looks pretty decent. Now, doing that same thing, but on a smaller scale to create the effect of weeds. Just whipping them out, one by one. Boom. Now we got some trees and weeds. And cool little trick. Go in there and make like a little oval. Now you got a cattail. If you don't know what a cattail is, you should have spent more time outside exploring nature. Do a quick Google. Now you know what a cattail is. Boom. Pretty cool. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and do the tops of these trees. One way I like to do it is I'll do like five thicker lines going out, kind of like if you were gonna draw a basic star or something. I'm gonna do one, two, three, four, five. And then I'm gonna go off of these lines with a bunch of other thinner lines similar to these to create the effect of the leaves on the tree. So, just whip those out. And when you start getting built up on the tip of the needle, you, you can tell because you're 
the tips of your lines won't be as nice and crisp. Start getting a little fuzzy on you. Now, it might look kind of easy the way I'm doing it. And it is if you practice your lines and dots like you're supposed to. If you practice those lines, then palm trees will be a breeze. And they'll look like they're blowing in the breeze. Happy little palm trees. There we have it, one palm tree. Make you want to be on the beach drinking a cold beer. Just whipping them out. Just a bunch of little lines working off of the main five lines. That's all it is. And you can just kind of balance them out wherever you think it needs it. But I think those look pretty good. Maybe add a couple more lines here to fill up that space a little bit better. And maybe even make it look like there's more of this grass at the base of the tree. All right, now, how about just some weeds over here? Whoops, got too close to the shirt. And another cattail. See what that looks like from a distance. Not too bad. Maybe a, add a little leaf there and there. Get some of those little fine lines in there, but don't get too close to it or you'll snag it like I did just a second ago. Add some of these little finer lines. There we go. All right, take a step back. Not too bad. I'm gonna make this black a little more solid right here. And I think I'll fade it out a little bit more. Cover up some of that blue. I had a plan to do some blue right there, but I think I changed my mind. Now, while I've got the black in here, I'm gonna go ahead and add a couple of happy little birds flying around the happy little clouds, flying out of the sunset, like happy little birds do. 
All right. Now basically all I'm doing here is whipping out a small curved line that way and then a curved line that way. Kind of like a V that's kind of just spread open a little bit more. And I like to do threes and fives. They're good odd numbers. They look kind of cool. Just throw the little birds at different angles. You know, and then maybe do three different sizes to make it look like they're some are closer and some are more in the distance. And there you have it. Three happy little birds flying in the happy little clouds. Now, I'm pretty happy with this design. I think the only thing left to do is white highlights. So I'm gonna load it up with some opaque white. All right, I got my airbrush loaded up with some opaque white. And once again, you definitely want the opaque for doing highlights like I'm about to do because it will go on top of all the other colors. It'll have more pop to it. Transparent white is more for like subtle highlights where opaque will, you'll really see them pop out. Make sure that tip's clean. And for, like I said, you wanna kind of find a reference photo online starting out until you get the hang of how things, how, how the highlights, where to put those compared to your light source or just get familiar with pictures of sunsets and stuff and just use those for reference too. Um, just play around with light in your room and just see what the light reflects off of and just do a Google search for using white, white highlights in art. Any kind of research you can do will help. Now this one's gonna be pretty basic. The sun will be here. And with these, these are kind of like silhouettes because the sun is on the other side of the trees from where we are. So they look black to us, but I'm gonna put a little white highlight on the edge in a couple of spots and then a white highlight across the water to make the sun look like it's shining across the water. And then maybe on the clouds in a couple of spots. And it just gives your design that much more detail, makes it pop out, and just makes it all around look cool. So first we'll do the sun. And I'm basically just gonna hold the airbrush down for a minute. Let it build up a little opaque circle. That'll be the sun. And then I'm gonna kinda do a glow around it, lighter. And then just kinda get farther away from the shirt and pull a line down that way. Step away, see how that looks. Maybe widen it up a little bit and go lighter. And to get really fancy, just kind of do some little opaque lines this way. And now I'll do maybe some on the clouds. Let's see. Just kind of trace right above the darker lines we did with the purple and blue. I'm just going to go right above those. See how it really makes those clouds pop out? It makes it look pretty cool. I'm gonna widen this sun up just a little bit.
All right, now for some highlights on the tree trunk. Since the sun's here, I'm gonna do the highlight on the right side of it. Just pull a line down along the side of it, just like that. Taper it in, taper it out. If you practiced your lines, then it'll be no problem. And I'm gonna just hold my other, hold my hand steady with my other hand when I'm doing these fine lines like that. Just like that. And then maybe even a little bit there. That adds a cool little effect on there. On those cattails. And I think I'm going to do some lines similar to these but down here to create the effect of water kind of like rushing in and out from the shore. Gives it a cool effect. And since we have this open spot here, it wouldn't even hurt to kind of just make that look like some water flowing through or something. Gives it a little bit more of a cool effect right there. And I think that's good. I don't want to do any more to it. I think that's plenty. It's pretty well balanced. It's got plenty of black in it, enough white highlights. You don't want to overdo the white, then it'll take away from it. So I'm going to leave it with that, call that done. Now the only thing left to do is heat press it. Um, when painting t-shirts, you have to heat set the paint which means get it up to a high enough temperature to where it fully cures within the fabric so that it won't wash out and fade as bad. Um, I've got my heat press. I'm gonna get that fired up, up to temperature and then I will walk you through how to do that. So let me get my airbrushes cleaned out and we'll get right to it. All right, before I heat press it, I'm gonna get a close up, let y'all check it out up close. Turned out pretty cool. Did you see the white highlights in there? All right, I took the shirt off of the shirt board and I have it laid out on my heat press. Now, most heat presses will come with Teflon sheets. That's what this is. I usually put one under my shirt and then I lay one down on top of the shirt. Make sure the whole shirt's covered. And always make sure your Teflon sheet's clean. Every once in a while, after a few uses, it might have some paint built up on it. So either clean it off or get a new sheet. Now heat presses you can get online. I got this one off eBay for probably a couple hundred bucks. It's no fancy name brand or anything. And I've had a few of these. They usually last me at least two or three years. So really that's all you need starting out. Make sure your shirt's laid out, no wrinkles. Get your heat press up to about 350 degrees. And they have timers and settings where you can control the temperature to make sure it stops once it gets up to a certain temperature. So set it to where it'll stop about 350. And you can set your timer. I'll usually set it for like 30 seconds. That's plenty at 350. Um, depending on the thickness of the shirt, sometimes you don't even really have to go that long. I'm gonna heat press this one. I'm gonna start out with like 20 seconds. That, sh that probably should be good. 
and you may have to adjust the knob to where it closes fairly easy. You want it to lock, but you don't want to have to force it too much. So I'm going to let that go for about 20 seconds because this shirt is a little bit thinner than some of the heavyweight shirts and I don't want to burn it. If you press it for too long, it will actually burn and leave a little bit of like a brown tint around the design and it'll leave like a square shape. You don't want that. So that worked out good. I went 20 something seconds and it's definitely hot enough. Don't burn yourself taking it off. And it looks good. Well, that wraps up this lesson. This is how to paint a little sunset scene on a t-shirt for beginners. Um, if you have any questions about anything in this video or request, if you want to request a, a different video for some other kind of techniques or anything, just let me know in the comments. Please subscribe to my channel. That'll help me out. And you can stay up to date with any new videos I make. I'm going to keep making airbrush videos and I may make some other cool videos too. Um, if you're into tattoo art, look me up on Facebook at Tattoos by Thomas or my shop page, Dark Theory Tattoo. Instagram, Thomas Kennedy Art. I got a lot of airbrush work on there, tattoo stuff on there, just some random stuff. So hit me up on there. Um, until next time, take it easy and practice your lines, dots, and sunsets.